So, on to the history of cryptography. Um, and as I say, uh, the, the specific details, who did what, when, um, is not uh, uh, something you're going to be asked on the exam. But um, we're going to cover some basic concepts here. And uh, so it's uh, uh, easier, more entertaining. I don't know uh, if, if we do it in terms of the, the history of cryptography. So, uh, about 2000 BC, so about 4,000 years ago, cryptography starts, at least, uh, nominally anyways. Um, about 2000 BC, um, there was one particular scribe who used non-standard hieroglyphs. Um, and so this is the first example of substitution, taking, uh, one entity and substituting another for it. So this is um, uh, the basis of an awful lot of uh, symmetric cryptography. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's letter for letter. Uh, in this case, it's, uh, so he's doing hieroglyphs, so it's, it's word for word. And in fact, um, it wasn't, uh, probably wasn't even intended to keep the information secret. Um, it seems possible, quite possible, that this guy only was uh, interested in abbreviating what he was writing, and therefore the, uh, you know, he, he used uh, a, a different hieroglyph, uh, varied the hieroglyphic uh, form. But, you know, it is substitution, so it introduces the idea of substitution. So, then we jump to about 400 BC and the Greeks. Um, and they had uh, the, oh, I don't know how to pronounce it, either Skytale or Sitale. Uh, S-C-Y-T-A-L-E. Uh, I don't know how the Greeks uh, pronounced that or how the ancient Greeks pronounced that. Uh, but this would be um, uh, the general on the field will take his uh, baton, uh, which is his sort of indication of rank and office, um, and uh, wrap a strip of leather around it. Then you write the message down the length of the baton. Um, you then unwrap the leather strip, give it to the messenger. The messenger wears it as a belt. If anybody captures the messenger, um, they've got what looks like a belt with a string of random letters on it. Uh, this is an example of the other uh, big idea in symmetric algorithms, and that is permutation. The letters are all there, but we put them in different places. We scrambled the position. So that's permutation. Substitution and permutation are uh, basically that's what you use in uh, symmetric cryptography. So, um, you know, here it is way back then. Here's the invention of cryptography, and everything after that has been sort of uh, minor developments on the field. Um, so, Anyway, uh, we've got, um, okay, uh, the key to the, well, let's, uh, yeah, um, let's go to uh, the Caesar cipher before we get into that. Um, the uh, Julius Caesar, um, this is just before uh, zero, and uh, he uh, had a, very simple substitution cipher, uh, letter for letter, and this is just moving down the alphabet uh, a number of places. As a matter of fact, he used the same key all the time because the key here is the number of spaces you move down the alphabet. That's all you need. You need the key. You know that they're using this substitution cipher, so you can encipher, you can decipher, 
in the same way. And as a matter of fact, uh, Augustus, who took over after Julius as emperor, uh, he used the same cipher. He just changed the key. He moved four spaces down the alphabet. Uh, so, uh, you know, obviously this is not a terribly strong cipher because the crypt analysis here is just to find the number of spaces down the alphabet and that is not a terribly difficult task. Your address space, your key space, is only 26 letters if you're doing it in English. If you're doing it in Hawaiian, you've only got 20 letters. Um, so, you know, you've, you've got, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's fairly easy to do a brute, brute force attack on that. Now, going back to the Greek leather belt, the key there is finding the diameter of the rod. Uh, and that uh, might be a bit trickier because, of course, it can be pretty random. Um, but, uh, anyways, that's, uh, that's the key, that's the cryptanalysis uh, involved in trying to, to work out those things. Now, um, there's, there's other types of cryptanalysis that you can do. Those are, you know, those are simple ciphers. Um, and so it's, you know, it's fairly simple to mount a brute force attack against it. It's not hard to, to figure that out. Um, if, uh, well, we'll get into a few more ciphers that uh, get a little bit more complex, still maintaining this uh, substitution and permutation, um, and uh, look at some additional forms of cryptanalysis that we can use to try and attack those.